Hi, I'm Jeffrey Gorman, and you're at the Jane Sauer Gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm having a show this month, the month of February. It's called Having Wings. So the theme of this show is basically anything that has wings, as you'll see here. And I'm pretty excited about the show because it gave me a chance to make some pieces that I've been thinking about, but I'd never really gotten around to. So uh, I've got about 12 pieces in the show, and I'm going to walk you through the show. And one piece that I'm pretty excited about is this piece behind me, which is Five Ravens. And this, this piece is based on, I have this Siamese cat, and she's kind of a troublemaker. And what she does is she goes up into the tops of our trees, and then these ravens come around her. And when I'm in my studio, I hear all this noise, and then I, and then I go out, and she's like way at the top of the tree, and there may be 20 or 30 ravens, and these guys are huge, and she's really tiny. So you can see these guys here. They're all kind of, they've got this dialogue, and they're, they're all kind of getting mad at the center raven right in the middle here. And if you, if you look at this, a couple of things which are new for me is, one thing that's new is that I got some uh, aluminum siding and weatherproofing, and that's what these bases are made out of. And I love the way when you put a little patina on it, it almost looks like a steel. And then the ravens themselves, they're, they're wrapped mountain bike tires. So what I do is I carve a form and then I start wrapping the mountain bike tires on it till I feel like the profile works for the, the birds that I'm doing. So, so this guy here, he's kind of getting mad at this guy and then this guy sees something else. And so they're all in this dialogue together. Um, uh, another artist gave me a bunch of these weights to these fishing weights which I think are really kind of evocative and then and then look at this this is like an old bicycle tire where you would you would put the air in here so I was really pleased the way these guys turned out and the dialogue that they have and now even though this is a show on creatures with wings there is a little cat here this is a previous piece that I did and he's kind of looking at the the birds and thinking about are they are they too big to take on and I love all the accumulated stuff that he's got here there's some keys in there and some some parts of a fishing rod and and boy you name it just about and he's got it this is an interesting piece that I did over here this piece is actually based on two ibises that I made about five years ago and I had them in my studio. They came back from an exhibition and I had them hanging in the, the studio and I was just thinking about them and I was actually thinking about maybe taking them apart and then I started working with these inner tubes and mountain bike tires and the, it, it's so evocative and to me, it also has this really Egyptian feel of this wrapping. So I just decided to, to wrap these older pieces and see what might happen. And initially, they were, they were pretty dark. Obviously, it's a very dark material. But then I added some other touches to it to kind of lighten it up a little bit. There's, um, you can see here's a mountain bike tire right here. And, and then again, here's where you put the air into the inner tube. And what I did for the base here is these are mountain bike tires also, and I refer to this style as, as Nouveau Mennonite. And you know, Mennonites are basically shakers that have smoked pot. What they do is they add a little, little bit of detail onto their furniture and then they feel really guilty about it. So that's kind of my, I was a furniture maker for about 15 years, so that's my style of furniture making. This next piece here, this four hanging birds, I call this the nest builders. You can see this nest up here. This is a lot of my work. I'll, I'll take pieces and I'll work them and I'll work them. And the, this was a piece that earlier I had done where they were flying around this nest up here, but it was pretty static. And I thought about how to make this piece just have a little more action to it, a little more movement. And so I projected the nest off the wall and then hung the birds down. And these birds here, this inspiration is basically, I spend a lot of time looking at my bird feeder. And I think of these songbirds outside as really kind of the unsung heroes of the natural world in the sense that they're out there 24 hours a day. There are no fancy documentaries on these little songbirds and they're just 
building their nests and taking care of their families and trying to avoid the hawks and they I, I just find them very imaginative and very lively and they have this great energy to them. So these four guys are just kind of flying around building that nest. This piece here, this hanging bird, when I first started making these creatures, this is how I made them. I basically was making kind of a skeleton of them and I wasn't really filling it in and I was thinking that this was maybe a piece that had been dug up or had been excavated from a site and a lot of the its material had had rotted away or had dissolved over time but the basic structure was still there and it was still going strong and in fact it was doing really well so this is a based on an earlier piece you know he's got these little radar like these are to, to, to hear the radar and then um, he's also he's got this mask here too that maybe he uses this is a raven mask that I carved so it's a it's a uh, something that he could put on if he needed to. Here's another bird here that, that I absolutely love, which is the great blue heron. I, I think of great blue herons as really a, they're both prehistoric, but they're also almost futuristic at the same time. And when you see them, they're, they're pretty awkward, but when they fly, they're really beautiful. And it, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a great blue heron nest, but I've seen pictures of them and they're these real gawky things where the sticks are kind of standing out everywhere and but but it seems to work. This guy, he's accumulated a lot in his travels. I think of these my animals as accumulating these kind of talisman or these fetishes. He's got some old tools here. If you look in the back, he's actually got a Meerschaum pipe back here that he's accumulated. This is actually kind of in in um, honor of my father who was a great pipe smoker. So I, I got a couple of his pipes and so I put that in there. And then look, as he was traveling, he must have gone through some suburbs because he got, he got some numbers from houses, some house numbers, and they kind of accumulated on there. But I accumulate stuff in my studio and through going through junkyards and, and, and if it feels evocative, I'll, I'll put it in a piece. You can see his legs here, they're copper wire. Somebody gave me some copper wire. And then this yellow, his yellow feathers here, this is old wiring from the inside of a house. And I thought it just had a real feathery feel to it. Now over here are two chickens. These are kind of, I think of these, these guys as, as the male who has the, the bigger head and he has the big tail and the female. And the females actually, they're kind of, they're, it's almost like a mating right here. She's kind of showing him her gorgeous wings. And then he's showing her his magnificent tail. And she's strutting underneath him. And, you, and isn't this just typical? It looks like he's about to peck her, you know? Isn't it? You know, he's kind of annoyed that, that he should be the one that's strutting. But, but, um, but she's going for it here. You know, I've been thinking about doing chickens for a long time because where I grew up, we grew up on this abandoned farm. It was an old horse farm. It was this huge old place. My father had chickens in one of the, the outhouses. And my job as a kid was to go in and get the eggs. And I was this dumb little kid. The roosters would get me in the corner and they'd hurl themselves at me. They'd take turns flying at me. And it would usually take me like 10 minutes to get a, you know, enough nerve up to race for the door. And I'd always say to my parents, I'm not really good at getting these eggs. But, but that was my job. So this is kind of remembering that, remembering the old days. Last summer I did travel to Southeast Asia and they're very proud of their chickens over in Southeast Asia. So you can see these guys have a little bit longer legs than maybe the chickens we might see around here. So this is kind of a combination of both of those. This is the final piece I did for the show. And I, this piece really shows some of the places that I get inspiration. I was reading an article in the New York Times science section and it was talking about these naturalists that in the 1800s had gone to places all over the world to pick up specimen for various museums and this particular naturalist had collected this fruit bat and he'd sent it back to this museum in, in the Netherlands and he wasn't with it when they, when they put it back together again. And so they had sent this back, the, the preparator had constructed this and he didn't really know what to, to go by and if you've ever seen an actual fruit bat's face, they have these 
pretty intense looking fangs. But this guy, when I saw the picture in the New York Times of this specimen, it kind of had this teddy bear feel to it. It was, it had this really innocent feel to it. And, and that, to me, it was kind of exciting in the sense of there's the actual creature and then there's our memory of the creature. And often when we recreate something, it's not exact. It's the memory of what we think it looked like. And so this is the memory of what they thought a fruit bat might look like. And so you've got his little feet here, his five little fingers here, and you've got, you know, you've got some identification maybe that the scientists had written when they, when they put it back together. So there's some numbers, some indicators here, it's A and A. And, and then he's accumulated some of these, as, as I call them, these talisman along the way as he was refabricated here. And then his wings here are an old, um, apron, an old apron that I had been using in the studio and I had, I had basically worn it out and I got it back out and I thought, boy, wouldn't that be a great fruit bat's wings? So this, his, his wing material here has a lot of life to it. And then if you go around the back of it, you can see on the back that he's also accumulated some odds and ends and some strange little letters, some keys and some beads and some, some strange little painted pieces of wood and things that were just kind of reassembled on him. And then down here, what I did was, uh, this is the identification tag here with this, his genus and species name for the piece. The piece is called... Um, Maglotti, which is the species name for the fruit bat. So I'm pretty pleased with the way he turned out. So that was the last piece I did for the show. And a little bit different piece, but I think he has a, a certain charm to him. We'll see if other people think he has a charm to him. <laughs>